Hello, my name is Tobias Ngala, and I am the location leader at Woodford. Today, we want to look at what is it that God looks at when he thinks about leaders. And because God looks at that and takes that very importantly, or he considers that as very important, it's something for us also to consider when we're thinking about the place of leadership. I'm sure you're watching this video as part of getting to know what is it that we look for when we're thinking about elders, those who serve alongside the pastors uh, and those who serve in the church. Now, <clears throat> Paul, Jesus, Moses, these great leaders that we read about in the scriptures had something to say about leaders and what we should look out for in the kind of leaders that we should choose. I want to begin by pointing out some things that both Paul and Jesus found to be weighty issues uh, and those that they didn't think of as weighty. So Paul and Jesus see first character, and Jesus points out servanthood as the most important thing when you're thinking about leaders. Now, I'm sure you, you're aware of something called charisma, which is great, and you, you love, I love leaders with charisma. They, they move masses, they move people, they, they have something magnetic about themselves. But when you think about that, it's not the number one thing that Jesus was looking for when he thought about leaders. For him, it was, if you want to lead God's people or lead among God's people, you need to be a servant of God's people. <clears throat> Paul, to him, he looked at the character as the number one thing when he thought about leaders. For him, actually, it was that character is a power behind great leaders. But today, as you think about leadership, Paul says something. He says, it's a noble thing if you desire and want to be a leader. It's noble in both the function of leading and also the position. It's an excellent thing. In fact, if you're thinking about becoming an elder in, in God's church, you're thinking about a wonderful, excellent honorable thing. But that doesn't mean that that's all you should think about. You should think about what are the qualifications in terms of character. Moses, when his father-in-law came to visit him, found that he was overworking himself, doing things all by himself, and his father Jethro pointed some three important things that he needed to consider when he chose or when he was going to choose leaders to work alongside him. I'll read that for you. Exodus 18, 21 says, but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens. <clears throat> so anyone considering or desiring serving God's people needs to ask these four questions. Number one, am I capable? Now when you think about capability, you're talking about skill, you're talking about what am I bringing on the table that will be of help to God's people. Number two, do I fear or reverence God? That's top on God's list if I was to tell you that. Do I fear or reverence God? This is the quality of knowing God. Do I have a relationship with God? Do I hold him to highest regard? Number three, am I dependable? Do I walk in the light? And a good question to ask here is, is there any slander 
or warranted accusation on my life? Is there anything that the accuser, Satan, can use to bring me down or to discredit God's church? And number four, do I hate dishonest gain or do I hate dishonesty? It's quality of truthful living. So when God is looking for someone to lead, I like the words in 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9, and it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. When God looks for a spiritual leader, he finds someone with the right heart. Character stands top in God's list when he's looking for someone to strengthen and to usher in to serve among his people. In essence, it says, God is so jealous for his people. God loves his people so much that he will not usher in anyone whose character is flawed. And he calls us as leaders to watch out the flock so that we include and bring among God's people men and women who have a character that pleases God. As we generally think of serving as elders among God's people, are there any aspects of your life that the enemy or others can hold up to accuse you? We must all seek to live above reproach because ultimately our lives either honor or dishonor Christ. They either gather or push away people from him. God bless you as you think about these things, as you desire the place of eldership.